Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday to you. Boy, it's going to be a warm one today. I, God bless my friends, they have a pool and I'm heading over there and jump in that water because it's going to be warm. Get myself a little sun, you know, get myself ready for a new week because we're in a new month. And uh, today's devotional, it's, it's, it's going to make us rethink the way we think. It's radical thinking. We're going to rethink the way we think. Amen. My name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, grateful for the victories that he has given me in my lives. And I am now the leader of of the recovery ministry called Busted Knuckles over at Roadhouse Biker Church, which is in San Bernardino, California. And, you know, reading this devotional, reading the scripture today, it's like, what? I need to do what? But you know what? It's radical thinking. God wants us to restructure the way we think. That's what it's all about. Amen. And so um, we are in Romans today. It is uh, chapter 12 and it's verses 17 through 21. So let's start us off in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, Father God. Right now there are some vicious fires burning out towards Cherry Valley, Forest Falls area. We have friends, family that are out that direction, Father God, and we lift them up to you. We ask for no winds. We ask for just a little bit of coolness in the weather right now, Father God, to help those firefighters that are on the front line, Lord. I lift that whole thing up to you, Father God. Protection, (sighs) Just, just protection, Father God, for those around there. I ask for blessings for each person watching this video um, as they rethink the way they think, Father God. This scripture definitely opened my eyes, and I pray that it, it opens somebody else's today. It opens their heart to a new way of thinking. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Yeah, there are some pretty bad fires burning right now out in uh, Cherry Valley area, heading up the hill. Um, so we just lift them up. You know, so if you can, those that are watching, just say a prayer for those families that are being evacuated or affected by this fire in one way or the other. All right. All right. So like I said, we are Romans. It's chapter 12, 17 through 21. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Radical thinking. It's like, what? You want me to feed my enemy? Give him something to drink? Uh, But you know what? Do good. Overcome those evil thoughts with good thoughts. Thoughts put in there by by your father. Okay? Because he wants us to do good. He wants us, as it says in here, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. It depends on you. It depends on your attitude. Amen. You know, and and these verses here kind of summarize the core of Christian living. If we love someone the way Christ loved us, then we will be willing to forgive. If we've experienced God's grace, aren't we going to be willing to pass it on, to pass it forward? And remember that grace is undeserved favor. By giving an enemy a drink, we're not excusing the hurt that he did. We're not excusing that misdeed that he did. We're recognizing him. We're forgiving him and we're loving him in spite of his sins, just as Christ did for us. Amen. So let's read in the devotional, you know, um, let's see. Grace filled living, living devotional, step eight, day two. Grace-filled living. And again, step eight is we made a list of persons we had harmed, and we became willing to make amends to them all. 
Most of us probably have relationships in which, in which we ho are holding grudges. Sure, we've hurt them, but they hurt us too. We become like children quarreling back and forth. You hit me first. I did not. Somehow, it just doesn't seem fair to let them off the hook. Now, we're supposed to become willing to make amends to everyone, even those who have wronged us. How? That's your prayer right there. How? The Apostle Paul left us this advice. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Again, that's Romans 12, 17 to 21. This is not impossible. We are not called to create peace, only to do all that we can to be at peace. All that we can to be at peace. We're not required to say that others don't deserve punishment, only to turn the job over to God. Let me repeat that. We are not required to say that others don't deserve punishment. Our requirement is only to turn the job over to God. We don't give up a quarrel because someone else is necessarily right. But for the sake of our recovery, we give up that quarrel. We can't change other people, but we can ask God for the courage to change ourselves. This may all seem backwards, but God's ways are not our ways. And as we turn our will and our lives over to God, we will learn that his ways do work. If, we're really, if we really are to experience God's grace, we'll want to pass it on to others. Amen. So just remember that, that forgiveness involves both our attitudes and our actions. If you find it difficult to feel forgiving towards someone who has hurt you, try to respond in, in just with kindness instead. Let me read this. Forgiveness involves both attitudes and actions. If you find it difficult to feel forgiving towards someone who has hurt you, try responding with kind actions. If appropriate, tell this person that you would like to heal your relationship. Lend a helping hand. Send him or her a gift. Smile at him or her. Many times you'll discover that the right actions lead to the right um, feelings. You know, and then it says on here, um, Or did I say? Uh, it's uh, verse 20. On the, cron on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And in doing this, you heap burning coals on his head. Some people ask, what the heck does that mean? So let me read this to you. What does it mean to heap burning coals on someone's head? This may refer to an Egyptian tradition of carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as a public act of repentance. By referring to this proverb, Paul was saying that we should treat our enemies with kindness so that they will become ashamed and turn from their sins. The best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into your friends. Amen. I would say, you know, I, I would prefer to have more friends than enemies. So just remember that by extending your hand and offering them a drink, you're not forgiving or you're not... You're not, wait, let me read that again. By giving your enemy a drink, you are not excusing him for the hurt or the harm that he caused you. You're not excusing that misdeed that they did. But what you're doing is you're recognizing him, you're forgiving him, and you're loving him in spite of that sin, in spite of that hurt, just as Christ did for you. So we need to remember, we need to rethink our thinking. It's radical. I know it is, but we need to do it. Amen. So you guys have a great day today. It's going to be hot. So please, you know, I can say it enough. Hydrate yourselves, you know, stay in the shade, put a hat on, sunscreen, you know, your dogs, bring them in. Cats, bring them in. Pets, kids, everybody, bring them in. If you got a pool, throw them in the pool. Hey, you guys have a great day. God bless you.